Live and direct from Coos Museum, Liechtenstein. It's TEDx Baduce 2013. Radically open. So, <clears throat> hello everybody, and thank you for the very nice introduction. Today, we have the 7th of December 2013. And exactly six months ago, the Washington Post and The Guardian breaks the story about Edward Snowden leaking documents. But I come later to this. I want to talk to you today about a relation, a special relation, something like a romance or a love story or something like that. I'm not talking about Rosamunde Pilcher or something like that. I'm sure that other people are better in that kind of stuff. But my story is about, or has some elements of a real drama. It's about great achievements, about hopes, dreams, but also about threats, insecurity, and risks. And finally, it's about the protagonists who are put to the test, which requires a decision, which will be crucial for their future. And my story also is about the truth, or is true at least, and it's about you, everybody of you, every one of you, whether you know it or whether you don't know. So here we go, my story is about the world in which we live in, about the digital connected world. Here we go. So, just to remember, the internet and the digital world began quite ponderously. In 73, 1973, Wind, Surf and Bob Kahn started their works on some transmission control, TCP, that later became the standard protocol for the World Wide Web and the services we are using, like emails. Ten years later, so in 1983, this TCP protocol became the standard for all active hosts. So if you take this to mark the birth of the Internet, the Internet would now be 30 years old. So if the Internet would be human, it would maybe look like this here. This picture was important to me because I promised you a romance or a kind of a love story. But let's back to the Internet. Ten years later, 20 years ago, exactly, 1993, the first internet browser went online, and by the way, in your neighbor country, in Switzerland, from the International Organization of Nuclear Energy, they also made the proclamation that from now on, the internet shall be accessible for every human being. So, that was 20 years ago. And shortly after that, we really saw the new, fascinating services and digital products growing all around the world. In 1995, it was Google. In 1995, sorry, it was Amazon. 1998, it was Google. 2003, it was FaceMesh, which later became Facebook, Flickr, TEDx, and so on. So all those services certainly changed our life, the way we communicate, the way we behave. And I'm even convinced that this has the power to reorganize our society. So we can call this really great. Just by the way, they also have an impact on the economy. We see new business models breaking through that haven't even existed before. And we see breaking innovations that may even help to societal questions such as the demographic change or a more efficient mobility or even maybe to help to a successful Energiewende. So that is also really great. So it seems all very nice. And a big pink colored maybe, which I've promised at the beginning. But maybe it's a bit too easy to become now super enthusiastic about everything. So what I'm saying is, wait a moment. I'm not starting now to tell about this kind of people that I've talked to that's saying, oh, this new technology, it's really a threat to all good old traditions, to the way we used to communicate. I'm not talking about this kind of guys who are really trying to prevent the digital change. 
And there are really many particular interest groups who are trying to do so. I can tell you from my for former times at the Federation of Industry. But I'm not convinced about all this. I think you can have important debate to have a successful digital change, but it doesn't question the internet at all. But then there are the other kinds of people um, who always try to explain us, be more careful. If you go to the internet with the digitalization of your private life, and even if you give your bank details, your most private information into the internet, think about who cares about your IT security or your data protection. Well, to be honest, this kind of people, well, kind of were called kind of um, party poopers, I think you call them, or in Germany we call them Spaßbremse. And um, even with some statistics and very impressive numbers on the threats, on the digital robbery, the digital blackmailing, and whatever, what, what really happens every, every hour or every minute, they weren't really convincing. Until that other day in history, which was the 7th of June, 2013. I think this day really changed a lot of things. We hear since that day almost every week about how the surveillance was organized of the international uh, data communication. And um, many people were surprised, or definitely were surprised, including myself, about the dimension of this. In my country, we felt in particular kind of we have to react on that. And Chancellor Merkel, she launched an eight-point program trying to better protect your privacy. But the debate became even more heated when it was published that the mobile phone of Chancellor Merkel was intercepted all the time. So we really are in a, in a, in a state where many of us are asking, how shall we deal with this situation? What shall I do to, to deal with this? And when I'm listening around and to my surroundings, I often hear two very different reactions. I'm not convinced on both of them. First is, well, the, big, the internet was an illusion. Uh, we probably have to disconnect ourselves to prevent bigger disasters. And you often also hear some kinds of renationalization, like let's renationalize the internet. Not convinced about that, and I can tell those people, if you don't understand the trends and the way where the world is going to, then you, you, you're fine with that, but I don't. So, and there are the other people who absolutely disregard the danger, and they're saying like, I don't mind if my email is co-readed, I have nothing to hide. But to this group of people, I also want to say, I'm not convinced. Because even if you don't have anything to hide, there are this kind of criminals and this kind of people who don't want good. And I think there's a good reason, for example, in Germany, why we have this as a base law, the informational self-determination. Um, so, so what can I say now? Do I have the answer? No, of course not. I can only make a suggestion. But I'm very convinced of this suggestion that I can give to the situation. And my suggestion based on two assumptions. The first assumption is that the world is as it is. So we will keep on being more connected and services will be getting smarter and cloud computing and big data will event much more services that are good for our life, good for business, will um, help the companies to, to stay competitive. So second assumption is that we can already, or that we have a lot of technologies, a lot of services, a lot of things all around us that can help you, can help everyone to have a safer surrounding, to, to, to watch that your IT security is safer. Um, so very often it's just a question of the effort I really want to do to use this kind of tools. Um, let me give you three examples talking about the passwords. Who of you really protected his, all of his devices or all of his documents that you, you don't want to have anyone, any, anyone else to read protected by, by passwords? Uh, and just by the way, uh, secret123 isn't a secure password. So um, 
one example. Another example about email communication. Um, there are lots of offers in Germany and all around the world about safe and encrypted communication. But who is doing the effort? Um, finally, think about your, your employer. I mean, it's so easy to take all your intellectual knowledge from the company out of your company. Um, not even purposely. I mean, often employers are misused. Um, employees are misused uh, and they don't know what they're um, taking out of the company. So I'm just saying it's about the effort to do and to make. So here's my suggestion. I think that with the new possibilities and the new chances that we have gained with the internet, we also gained some more responsibilities with ourselves. So, and um, I think if we, if we do take this responsibility serious for ourselves, then that may be the right direction as a response to the incident six months ago. Uh, it doesn't seem like the super new and big thing now, but I think even if you realize this small idea that you use and to try to make your surrounding a bit more secure and watch a bit of your privacy, then you can do a lot. And I'm not boring anyone with numbers, but it's said that it's up to 90% safer and more secure to just do this little effort. So that was my little idea for today that I think was worth spreading around the world. Um, is it a happy end? Well, we see. Thank you very much.